Good to be back on the air. It's Asian and let's play some Wild Forest. So we'll play a brand new account so I can walk you guys through the basics of the game as well as to give you gameplay only footage. So enjoy. So the controls for Wild Forest is simple. You can click on buildings and spots inside territories on the map to upgrade or build new buildings and you control units on the map either by dragging them to their new movement or target location or by double tapping to command all units to obey. The HUD in Wild Forest is also simple. You have your unit cards at the bottom of the screen. It shows you the units you have equipped, when you can summon them, how much mana you need to summon them, their level and tier, and how many you currently have summoned. Last but not the least, you have your mana counter at the lower left corner of the screen which you use to create buildings and summon units. So the game is very simple. You spawn with your town hall and one swordsman, same as your opponent, and your goal is to destroy the enemy town hall. That's it. You battle for territories on the map which you can use to create more mines, but Barracks and towers which allows you to summon enough force to destroy your opponent. Mines give you one extra mana every certain time that passes while barracks allows you to summon one unit every time it's available. And towers fire on enemies that enter its range of attack. What's interesting about Wild Forest is the games are very fast paced. Usually matches are decided within the first 30 seconds to 1 minute of the game because whoever gets access to more resources at the start of the match can usually snowball the game enough to win. What exactly do I mean about snowballing resources? Well, maps in Wild Forest tend to have around 10 to 12 building spots only, so the game is about capturing and securing as many building spots as early as possible because this allows you to create more buildings, more mines means more mana for you to expand faster and place more buildings as well as to create more and higher quality units, while more barracks means that you can produce and replace said units faster. So assuming that both players have equally matched units, the winner boils down to who has one or two more buildings working and producing more resources for them. While there are maps that are linear and force people to play aggressively, even for more rounded maps usually the best strategy is to be proactive and play aggressively as compared to playing defensively because this forces your opponent to think and react to you instead of you being at a disadvantage by being forced to act reactively. Before we get into the gameplay and match videos, I also want to give you a brief summary of the basic units in the game which is the Swordsman, Archer, Knight, Sniper, and Spearman. While there are over 20 units in Wild Forest as soon as now, these 5 are the bread and butter units in Wild Forest since all players have access to them. So it's mandatory for you to be able to use them properly and know what they're capable of at the very least. Swordsman as the most basic unit in the game. All matches even if you don't use a Swordsman unit in your deck start you off with one right next to your town hall. They don't have anything special going on for them, they can get summoned with a shield which can absorb damage and allows them to tank more hits before dying. So for 5 mana, they're still a very efficient unit. Knight is likely the first tier 2 unit that you will encounter in Wild Forest. They're basically the poster boy of Wild Forest since you can see them on the branding, on the logo, on the loading screen, and so on. Knights or Wolves are basically an upgraded swordsman with higher HP, stronger damage, and with an AoE attack so that they can hit multiple units per swing. Spearman is also another tier 1 unit with a modified attack that not only hits all units in a straight line but also goes through shields. Basically, spearmen can kill units with shields such as buildings, swordsmen, and knights by damaging their health directly. This is very good to know because you can basically directly damage the enemy town hall for example by sending a few spearmen on a kamikaze attack if time is running out for you. Archers are one of the best units in the game and almost a must-have unit for any team. They are your standard range unit that can provide extra damage from afar. They hit fast, their damage is decent, they are very cheap at 5 mana each, and most importantly, they can counter airborne or flying units at the start of any game because you can already summon archers. You can't go wrong with having an archer on your deck. Last but also the least, you have snipers which is arguably the worst unit in this game. Sniper is a tier 2 unit that costs even more than knights at 14 mana each, moves slower than most melee units which means that they can't micro unlike archers for example, and their attacks takes 3 seconds to charge and does not even do enough damage to compensate for it. As soon as you can replace Sniper, I suggest you do so because they are really one of the worst units that you can have. The worst problem that they have is the fact that since it takes 3 seconds to charge an attack, a good player can just move back and micromanage their units to the point that your Sniper just dances back and forth because it can't line up a shot fast enough. So that's the rundown of Wild Forest HUD mechanics and gameplay as well as a summary of the most basic units that you will be encountering in the game. So that's the rundown on Wild Forest HUD mechanics and gameplay as well as a summary of the most basic units that you will be encountering in the game. I'll leave you with the clean match recordings and I'll see you all on the other side.